Hi guys, how's it going? Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. And we're going to move along in our torsional section, uh, twisting, and we're going to do something, uh, I'd say, a, a lot more tricky and, and more involved than what we've been doing so far. So far, we've been able to solve for directly for any unknown torques uh, that we've encountered, and that's great. I mean, we can just solve for T or Q or whatever it is and make our torque diagram and solve for the values that we need, but uh, when you're encountering, you know, different types of exam questions, it's not going to be that simple. Uh, and, and this is a case or an example in which it isn't as simple. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn a little uh, a diagram here, a sketch. And you'll notice that I'm not using like a printed uh, question. Uh, we're using sketches and, and it's important to draw sketches in all of these problems. I mean, drawing a good sketch, a nice big sketch and labeling it properly can make the difference between understanding what's going on in the middle of the question and making a silly error and getting a zero. So always be drawing sketches. Draw nice sketches that are nicely labeled, use different colors, and it'll make your life easier. Anyway, let's get started with this. Now, an indeterminate problem, what does that mean? What is, what is an indeterminate problem? An indeterminate problem means that we have more than more unknowns than the, the number of equations that we have, okay? And what that means is we can't directly solve for the unknown torques in this question. So if we look here, we have two fixed cantilever supports here, two fixed supports, and we have a single torque, okay? So we're only going to be able to make one equation. We're going to have a reactionary torque at A, we're gonna have a reactionary torque at C, and we're gonna have a torque at B, which we know. So that's gonna be two unknowns with one equation. We can't solve for that directly anyway. So the trick to these types of indeterminate problems is, well, let me just preface that by saying there's two different types of indeterminate problems, okay? There's a problem in which you have uh, two fixed supports and you're going to have two unknown supports here and you're going to have another type of indeterminate problem of two different types of materials, okay? So that's, we're, we're gonna move on to that next. This one, we'll just focus on the two fixed support types of indeterminate problems. And the, the matching condition between the two beams that you need to know in this type of question is that the angle of twist or the amount of twist that each shaft makes, okay, when, when we add those two shafts together, in terms of their angle of twist, that's going to equal zero, okay? Because they're fixed, we're assuming that at the supports, the beam is not moving, okay? So the addition of the twist of the brass shaft here, plus the twist of the Monel shaft here is going to equal zero, okay? And we're going to need that condition to solve this problem. So don't forget that, and it's the main trick, okay? In a, a double, doubly fixed indeterminate torsion problem, you're going to need to know that the sum of the angles of twist are equal, or not equal, sorry, they're equal to zero. All right, knowing that, we can start to solve the problem, all right? So we've drawn out this, uh, this diagram here. We have a disc in the center with a positive torque of 15 kilonewton meters acting on it. We have a brass shaft of 200 millimeters in diameter and 600 millimeters, millimeters long from A to B. From B to C, we have a Manel hollow steel shaft. Uh, and the outer diameter is 150 millimeters. The inner diameter is so, and this is another trick. They give us the thickness in this question of the hollow shaft, okay? So the thickness, if we're considering the diameter, needs to be multiplied by two and subtracted from the diameter, okay? So, which means that we have 150 millimeter diameter of the Manal shaft, and if we were just to subtract 10 millimeters from that to find the inner diameter, that would be wrong, okay? We need to take into consideration that the millimeter, the thickness is on both sides of the shaft, and we need to multiply that by two. So we have an outer diameter of 150 millimeters and we have an inner diameter of the pipe of 130 millimeters. Let's not forget that, okay? All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first step that we need to do is we need to draw a torque diagram. And let's just write down the condition that we had before. or the, sorry, the condition that we discussed before, and it's that these angles, angles of twist are equal, okay, to zero. Now, 
How do we begin? That's a good question. We need to draw a torque diagram. Now you might be asking, oh, we don't know what the torques are at A and C. How can we draw a torque diagram? That's a good question. We can draw the torque diagram in terms of the variables, okay? Okay, so we can substitute our, our torque diagram values into our angle of twist equation and we can solve for our unknowns. So let's get started with the torque diagram. If you, uh, if you haven't gone up to this point, if you just clicked on this video and you don't know what a torque diagram is, click on the screen, you can go back and you can take a look at exactly how to draw this because we need to know how to do this very uh, confidently if we're in order to solve these kind of problems. Okay, so let's draw our torque diagram now. Okay, so we have our support A here, right? So we have support A, we're gonna label that, okay, we'll say TAB, okay? So the torque in TAB, okay, is equal to, and as we can see here, we have a positive torque in the center at B, okay? So that means that the C and A torques are going to have to resist that torque in order for the beam not to move. So we're going to know that torque A is going to be in the opposite direction, okay? So we're going to have, let me draw that in for you. So we have TA here, it's a torque moving opposite to this one, okay? So starting from here and going across, we can start with our torque diagram. So the torque developed, the internal resisting torque in part AB of the shaft is going to be equal to negative TA. Okay, so we're, and we're gonna leave it in terms of negative TA because we don't know what TA is yet. And we're going to do this, label that. Okay, next, what's TBC? Well, as we uh, discussed earlier when drawing our torque diagrams, we have a negative TA here, okay? And we're going to add 15 kilonewton meters to our TA in the positive direction because as we can see, it's clockwise, okay? So, let's just go ahead and do that. The internal resisting torque in the section BC is going to be equal to positive 15 because of our sign convention. And then we still have that negative TA, right? That didn't disappear, that's still there. We're gonna add those together. So it's gonna be 15 plus negative TA. Okay, and that will cause our torque diagram to come to 15 minus TA. All right, and we're done our torque diagram. All right, that's the first part of the question, guys. Um, we're gonna split this uh, question up into maybe four or five videos just because it is a really long question. This is a very potential, uh, a potentially very common exam question for your, your teacher to ask you. So uh, we're gonna split it up and we're gonna be very detailed about it. So, you know, uh, Click on the next video and uh, we'll continue to solve it. Thanks.